We have something prepared for you, and it is going to be awesome. Because it's Legacy Sunday, and they kind of mentioned it earlier, that's four times a year that we love bringing every generation in this room, not only to worship together, but hear the word of God. And so as we were kind of planning it out, I actually went to Pastor Tim, and I said, hey, I have a message that's been on my heart for honestly about six, seven months. And uh, I shared with him, and it was like, it's it, not for this time. I'm going to preach it next month, and I'm excited for that. But I was like, okay, if Legacy Sunday is about bringing in all generations, allowing us to engage with one another, I'm trying to think through, okay, what can we really do? Especially with ending our 21-day fast, and this theme for this morning is young adult theme. I don't know if you noticed, but our worship team was all young adults. Wasn't that awesome? Seriously did an amazing job. But because it's young adults, there's something I realize that most people in this room, unless you're a young adult, have experienced, is what we do on a Monday night. Now, you probably hear about things that we do. You know, you've seen young adults. You've gotten to know some of the young adults. But you haven't attended a Monday night service. And you might be like, well, I don't really know what they do. Now, what I'm going to share with you this morning, I believe, is an experience to hear from the Word of God. Not something that I prepared, but really allowing you to hear from God himself. So there's this thing that we do occasionally called Lexio Divina or Lectio Divina. Has anyone heard of that? All right, good. I'm glad most of you haven't. Because seriously, Lexio Divina, what that means is it's divine reading. And so what we're going to do is we're taking our agenda and putting it off to the side. And we're going to create a space to say, God, I want to hear from your word this morning. Personally, for me, why I love Lexio Divina is because two things. One, we live in a culture that is going 100 miles an hour. Am I right? Like, I mean, we are like, I am busy all the time. But there's something that happens when we stop and we rest in God's word. And so personally, I love Lexio Divina because that's what it's going to allow us to do this morning. The other reason is that there are times that we are also getting hit every single day by someone else's opinion, by someone else saying, this is what you need to know. But instead... Lexio Divina is saying, hey, God, what do you have to say to me? That what I'm going through in my life right now, what does your word have to say for me this morning? Now, I'll be honest, this is the biggest group I've ever done Lexio Divina with. And that's awesome because I think it is about to go crazy. But this is what I'm asking. I'm going to give you some instructions, and this is what's going to happen. I'm going to read scripture four times. It's going to be the same scripture four times. We're going to have some young adults come out, and, and they're going to read it as well. But just like the young adults and when we meet and we do this, I want to say or I want to release you that you don't have to stay in your seat. Because most times when we come to church, right, you got your assigned seat. Who has a assigned seat but their name isn't on it? You're like, that's where I sit. So we come to church and we have our seat and we stay there. And that's okay. You can stay there this morning or I am welcoming you. You can be anywhere in this room. All I'm asking is that you put your heart in a posture of receiving. And so some of you might come, you might sit up here, you might be in the corners, you might stand in the back, or you might just sit right where you are, and that's totally fine. But I want to give you the same invitation that I'll give the young adults. That, hey, what is a position, a posture that we can be in to say, God, I just want to receive. And maybe I just want to step out of my seat for a moment. Because maybe sometimes we just stay in our seat too much in life, right? And so we're just saying, I just want to step out and activate my faith. So this is what's going to happen to hear from the word of God, Lexio Divina. This is the four steps that we're going to go through. And so we're going to have a mic. Uh Uh-oh. We're about to have a mic in each of these sections. And what's going to happen is when I read the first time, I'm asking you to listen for a word or phrase from what I'm about to read. I'm going to read John 3, 16 through 21. You'll hear some of the verses that you probably heard before, for God so loved the world. But we're going to go a little bit deeper. And in that first phase, I'm going to ask you to listen for a word or phrase. Then I'm going to give a minute for us to just sit in that. Okay, God, this is what you're speaking to me in this moment. Then I'm going to open the floor. And if you're like, you know what? I want to share that word or phrase. All I'm asking you to do is just raise your hand and someone will pass you a mic. But this is the challenge. Kids, youth, young adults, adults. I understand that not everyone's going to be able to speak. So I'm going to ask those that feel something in their spirit that they should share. And this is why. Because when we share with the body, it confirms and affirms things that God is already speaking to others. 
you don't realize that when God is speaking to you and when you share that and that testimony of that, God is also doing something and affirming something in someone else. Man, I was hearing that too. Man, yes, I was feeling that as well. And it's so cool because what we're going to hear is someone over here say something. And then you're going to hear someone over here say something. And it's going to be all across the room and we're sharing what the word of God is saying. So the first one is a word or phrase. And then you're going to share and then we'll go and I'll have someone come out and we'll read a second time. Then you're going to listen for what God is speaking to you about the word or phrase. The third time, we will then pray about the word or phrase or pray for someone that you heard already share a word or phrase. And then the last one is we're going to meditate on it. Now, don't worry. I know it's a lot. And I'm going to explain it as we go on. But I want to encourage the children and the youth, the young ones, I hope that you will share with us. Just like Matthew was saying earlier, that we are willing to step forward into God's presence like children of faith saying, God, I want to come closer to you. And so I just want to share. Now, when I open the floor too, I just encourage you to not take up five minutes. Right? (laughs) But what I want to encourage is that when you do speak, maybe about 30 seconds each, because there's so many people in this room. And I believe this is what's going to happen when we activate our faith. We're going to see the body of Christ moving in what God is saying instead of just me up here telling you what God is saying. And so now that we've done 21 days of fast, now that we have tried to surrender something to say, God, I want to receive, we're going to end this 21 day of fast of doing Lexio Divina, divine reading, and allow scripture to speak for itself. Is that cool? All right. So close your eyes, move anywhere that you want in the room, and I'm going to read the scripture. And I just want you to listen for a word or phrase. John 3, 16, verse 21, 2, 21, says this. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Whoever believes in him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe is condemned already because he has not believed in the name of the only Son of God. And this is the judgment. The light has come into the world, and people love the darkness rather than the light, because their works were evil. For everyone who does wicked things hates the light and does not come to the light, lest his works should be exposed. But whoever does what is true comes to the light, so that it may be clearly seen that his works have been carried out in God. Let's take a minute, just reflect on that word or phrase that stood out to you from scripture, and then I'll open the floor. All right, I'm gonna open the floor. If someone would like to share just the word or phrase, will you raise your hand and someone in the front will bring you a mic. Would anyone like to go? I heard, relax, I've got this. World, not just a few, not just 144,000, not just an elect, but the entire world. He sent his son for the world. That means each one of us in here. Anyone want to share a word or phrase from the scripture? We got someone back here. not condemned but whoever does not believe is condemned already Mm -hmm. but whoever does what is true comes to the light awesome anyone else Through him, God's love, eternal life, and light. Awesome, thank you.
do not condemn doesn't mean that we love sin. It means it's not our job to judge. It's our job to show the love of God. I've saved you. You can trust me. We'll do two more. We have Whoever one in the middle. Believes. Where is that? Who is that? So can you say it again for us? Whoever believes. Mm. I love it. Last one. Receive everlasting life. I love it. Now we're going to go and read it a second time. Michelle's going to read it. And this time, what I want you to listen for, as you hear that word or phrase from the passage that we're reading, listen for what God is saying to you about that passage. We'll take a time to meditate and then open the floor for those to share. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Whoever believes in him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe is condemned already, because he has not believed in the name of the only son of God. But this is the judgment. The light has come into the world, and people love the darkness rather than the light, because their works were evil. For everyone who does wicked things hates the light, but does not come into the light, lest his works should be exposed. But whoever does what is true comes into the light, so that it may be clearly seen that his works have been carried out in God. We'll take a minute to reflect on that word or phrase and ask God, what is he saying to you through this passage? I will open the floor, but before we move further, raise your hand if you wanna share something. Uh, and what I'll do is I'll point to the one who will share and we'll kind of move from there. So if you feel comfortable to share anything that God is saying to you about the word or phrase, what is scripture saying? We have, so pass out the mics and I'll point who will speak. So I heard, come to the light. And what he told me is, walk toward me, my child. I want to meet with you. I want to be with you. I want you to know me fully. So come to the light, my light. We need a mic up front here. It reminds me of the way my mom um, quotes it. She says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son to make up the difference. And where we feel that we fall short, God gave his son. Jesus in all ways makes up the difference in our lives. I see a hand back there. We have a hand over here. Rebecca, we'll go over here, Mike. <clears throat> Sorry. Be the light in a world of darkness. It could be a smile, a word of encouragement, a hug. There's a lot of negativity in the world on a daily basis, and people just need to know they're loved and God's love coming through us. So be the light. Thank you. Becca, we have someone back there. We had a mic back here. Sarah. Yeah, I, I heard the same just be the light. I mean, the name of our church is Illuminate, um, and there's so much darkness in the world, and God's just calling us to be the city on the hill, to be the light for everyone around us, and just to go forth and just, just spread his love and his light. I have two choices, darkness or light. 
and how I respond to them show me what I really believe. It's good. God always loves us. Thank you. That's awesome. One or two more. Anyone? Raise hands. We have a hand raised right here. One more. And we'll get one back here. To have eternal life. Mm. Love it. So mine was more about um, being clearly seen and then his works carried out. And as much as people feel sometimes I'm too busy, I feel very passionate that the things I do choose to give myself to, we're able to, um, I, I want to make sure that God's work is seen in what I do. Thank you. Awesome. Yeah, you got one more? For God did not send his son to condemn the world, but to save the world. Jesus didn't come to judge us, but to help us. That's awesome. Thank you, Eli. Now we'll go into our third reading. So I'll ask Shad to walk out. And this time, what I love about this one is after we read it, I'll give it a time of just reflecting again on the word or phrase. But I encourage you when we open the floor to either pray about the thing God is speaking to you or pray for someone that you heard just say something. And we're just going to come into agreement with that. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Whoever believes in him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe is condemned already because he has not believed in the name of the only Son of God. And this is his judgment. The light has come into the world and people love the darkness rather than the light because their works were evil. For everyone who does wicked things hates the light and does not come to the light, lest his works should be exposed. But whoever does what is true comes to the light so that it may be clearly seen that his works have been carried out in God. We'll take a minute to reflect on that word or phrase and what we will pray for, for either ourselves or for someone else. Let's take a minute. We'll open the floor. Is anyone wanting to pray? Raise your hand. I see a lot of hands. Dear Lord, I pray that we are willing to let our work shine in your light, even when surrounded by darkness that feels like it will crush us. Let us be willing to let our works be shown so that your light can shine brighter. Thank you. I feel like the Lord here wants to speak to a man, and this is, Lord, what I pray, that this man would know that he is important, that he's vastly more important than he even realizes. And he's in this room. And the reason he doesn't know he's important is because he feels the condemnation of the, the deceiver. And the Lord wants you to know there's no condemnation. There's no finger pointing at you. There's no judgment against you. There's only love and great love for you. 
and you need to hear you are a man of great importance. And I asked the Lord, I said, Lord, who is, who is that man? Which man is this for? And he said, it's for every man. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Is anyone else wanting to pray? Please help me to destroy the wall that I've made between me and forgiveness for other people and what they've done to me and other people. Dear Lord, I, I speak to you on behalf of the smallest children of Illuminate Church today. There's so much joy in this group of children that we have been blessed with that are part of this church. And we ask that you just help them shine, shine brighter than they ever have before. Help them to withstand the attacks that they have on their faith, on their families, on everything that's happening around them and in their schools, and that they just show your love and that they take that and they hold on to your love and your grace and your mercy and they just have faith that cannot be shattered, that cannot be destroyed and that they become the true light and a blessing that we have as a church, that we can stand behind them and just be so honored and so proud that they have brought honor to you, Lord. I love it. Amen. Anyone else? Who believe in God no matter what feeling you're feeling. Thank you, Sunday. Lord, there's many of us that are put into a place where darkness seems to be raining. And we're afraid to say something because we know it's not the popular opinion. We know that it will bring hateful words at us, Lord. But I just ask that you give us the strength to speak truth in complete love, not in the condemnation, Lord, that you gave us this love to speak it, that we won't feel exposed because a light is not exposed into darkness. Light is a weapon against darkness, Lord. And I just pray that we can be that light in that dark place to, to remove the lie that darkness is safe because it's not. In your precious name. One or two more. Yes. Holy God, uh, I just feel from you that some people are in here and they're saying, yeah, it says for God so loved the world. But they're saying, yeah, but does he really love me? Lord, and I just pray that in their hearts right now, in our hearts, all our hearts, we would embrace this fact, this very powerful truth that you came for us to prove to everyone that you love us, that you value us so much that you would lay your life down. You would lay your heavenly robe down, put on the flesh of man, you would lay your life down and then you would just defeat death by rising again. Lord, and I just pray your love would rise in every heart. Your love would just rise up. Lord, I just thank you for your love. Just pray you'd minister to those who still question that. You would help us. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Last one. Father, we just ask you to open our eyes to your light, Lord. That you would shine down your light, Lord, and let us see you. Give us understanding of who you are, Lord God, and, and draw us away from the darkness into your light, Lord, in Jesus' name. Thank you. I'm going to ask Marissa to come out. This is the last time that we'll read it. I want you to continue to think of that word or phrase and what the scripture is speaking to you this morning. And then we're going to give a little bit longer time to just rest in that, allowing yourself to just surrender before God, no one else in the room, just you and God, and receiving what he wants to speak to you this morning. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. 
Whoever believes in him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe is condemned already, because he has not believed in the name of the only Son of God. And this is the judgment. The light has come into the world, and people love the darkness rather than the light, because their works were evil. For everyone who does wicked things hates the light and does not come into the light, lest his works should be exposed. But whoever does what is true comes to the light, so that it may be clearly seen that his works have been carried out in God. Let's take a few minutes to just rest in what the word said to us this morning. This morning is very different. It's slower, makes us stop for a second. But I think what's powerful about allowing scripture to speak into our lives is that again, we're just saying, God, let me just put my agenda aside. All that's going on, I know there's Super Bowl parties tonight and events and whatever, but it's saying, God, I I don't wanna be too busy for your presence. I don't want to be too busy for your word. I'm going to be too busy to then pray. And so uh, I think the best way that we can respond and is what I would do uh, with our young adults is that I'm going to ask our encouragers to come up. And what's amazing about this passage is that we're being told that Jesus was sent down for you. But what I love is in John 3, 16, you've probably heard it time and time again, for God so loved the world. But I think the one verse that is always missed is John 3, 17. And how it talks about how he didn't come into the world to condemn it, but to save it. And so this morning, uh, we talk about light and darkness. And you might be saying, you know what? Uh, I, I hear the word. And it's talking about this son that was sent down for me, but... Did he really die for me? Was he really sent for me? Let me tell you that this morning, the issue isn't about sin anymore as much as it is about unbelief. Now, what I mean by that is that Jesus died for your sins. Now, I'm not saying go and sin, but what we're saying is Jesus saying, I want to transform your life. I wanna bring light into your life and no longer darkness. And when you come to me, there's this great exchange. I mean, that's what this fast was all about, was God, I wanna surrender so I can exchange with you more of you. And so you might be that person this morning that, you know, you're like, I've never actually personally surrendered my life to Jesus. Let me tell you, there is a great exchange that he wants to have with you. His life, his death, and his resurrection is the example of the love that he has for each person in this room and outside of these walls. And so these encouragers are up here and they have been preparing for you. And to stay in this posture of worship and receiving and surrendering, as we go into this song to close out the service, I encourage anyone that's like, you know what? I wanna know more about this Jesus. I've heard his name before, but who is he really? to me. And so they prepared their, their selves and to, to, to receive you this morning and to share with you the gospel, to pray for you as you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus is Lord. Or maybe you're the person this morning that says, you know what, 
I am busy. I am. My life is crazy and is chaotic. Jesus was a huge part of my life at one point, but today, not so much. I also welcome you to come forward and say, you know what, God, I, I believe that you are not here to condemn me, but you came to save me from my situation. And so with young adults and what we would do is we want to celebrate because I think God is worth celebrating. Amen. He's worth celebrating because what he has done and will continue to do is an amazing thing for each of our lives and people who don't even know his name yet. And so we're going to go into this song. If you want to stay where you are, if you want to come up front or you want to meet these encouragers, we want to give you that space before we close service to say, I want to respond to what I heard this morning. So will you pray with me? Father God, we thank you that today is a little different, but it's okay. It's okay to be different sometimes. Father, I thank you that you give us a moment to find rest in your presence. What we did this morning wasn't anything like I have to do this. It's just more saying, God, I want to hear you. And so, Father, in this posture, in this position that we're in right now, will you lead us? And may we respond and activate our faith and worship you for what you have done and will continue to do. You sent your son to save me. You didn't send your son to condemn me. You sent him to change my life for eternity. And so, Father, we praise you for that. In Jesus' name, amen.